Hello and welcome to the Man and Machine technical demonstration for importing an Inventor model into Revit. My colleague David Wilkinson, our Inventor and Revit expert, will demonstrate how easy it is to do this. I'm going to go through this quickly because the, the Inventor side of it is not really the focus for today but uh, basically we've got an Inventor assembly. This is only a very simple assembly but the complexity doesn't matter, we can use the same techniques with whatever it is. It's a part which is the vessel shape with some uh, some branches on it and then two flanges that are from content center. What we're going to do first of all is simplify the design. So we're simply going to say create this as a simplified component as a single part. So I'm not bothered about the assembly data at all. So I come in and tell it I want to recognize information so that I can bring that across to Revit. And I'm not bothered about the internals of this so I'm simply going to cap off. And I could choose an automatic option here but I want to keep the bolt holes. If I choose that, it's now filled that in completely. So from a geometry point of view, it's far simpler. I can then ask it to recognize different features for Revit. So Revit could actually recognize these things as extrusions and part of the modeling environment so we can modify it in Revit if we wanted to. We don't have to do that, but I've just chosen to in this case. And then once we've finished that, um, I could export that to Revit now and I can pick it up in Revit and use it but as it stands at the moment um, that we, we need some more information we need some connection points on here because these are flanges but we also need the Kobe information put in there and we can do that in Revit or something that we've done at Man and Machine is we've written a couple of little routines in fact we're, we're now creating a, a BIM toolbox for Inventor which allows us to populate property information according to BIM. So a standard dialog box to enter information. These are all the fields that are required for the BIM standard or the Kobe standard. Okay. So if I just drop some details in here, I'm not going to fill them all out obviously. Uh, so now, and then one, two, three, um, material, let's say copper for today. Okay. So that's me done. If I now go to our BIM exchange tool with an inventor, uh, I can say well I can just send this straight out or we can say I want to specify some connectors so that there is a connector it's circular it's picked the right size up already but I could override that obviously and uh, it's a uh, domestic hot water I've got more property information in here that I can fill out now and this all goes towards your BIM information now, I'm not going to populate any of that for what we're doing and if I do the same on here uh, just flip the direction around this time and say that's cold water. So I've preset the connectors on here ready for Revit, but I've done it in Inventor because the design guy knows what he's designing this, so he knows what these values are. It makes sense for him to, to put that information in rather than somebody having to do it in Revit. Once I've got that done, I can then save this. So if we, let's just, in fact, I can leave it there call it equip and then if I just orientate it correctly it's going to be saved as a Revit family file an RFA file so all the information is there at the moment this is the property detail but if I choose to include all property information you can see now all that BIM information is automatically being exported including the ones that I modified okay and if I save this away and if I drop this into our demo folder, let's call it demo heater for today. What's going to happen is it's now translating the inventor data into Revit data and building a family in the background. So it's processing this through, as you can see the progress bar going across. Once that's done, it's a fully fledged Revit, Revit file. And we'll go and have a look at that briefly in Revit. there there we go so you have a report just to tell you if there's any problems or it's encountered any issues in this case not that's usually the case so if we go back to Revit briefly um, and basically say right I want to insert a component now ah, well that's one I've done before if I choose to load that in uh, so if I come in here and say BIM down 
I want demo heater. So it's going to load that equipment in. As you can see, I've got that in there. I've got one I've done before as well. So I can now drop that in anywhere inside of my model, just as I did before with windows and doors. So that's me creating a BIM model inside of Inventor and then sending it directly to Revit or saving it and then utilising it in Revit just by loading it in. If you look there as, as we look on the actual BIM model, you can see we've got the specifications for the, uh, the connections. And if I come in here, we've got information here. But if I go and edit the type, all these D values here are dimensional values that's come from Inventor because I chose the way I chose to do it. I could actually modify these parameters and change the size and shape of that model in Revit if I wanted to. So we're probably not too interested in that, so the dimensional information is off. But if we then scroll down the list, all our Kobe information or BIM information is actually here. So heater, MM123 and copper. That's what I authored in Inventor and sent directly to Revit. So that is our BIM model done. Uh, from Inventor and utilised in Revit. That's a, a huge, huge benefit where for manufacturers who have to produce BIM models so that we can do that directly in Inventor and then generate those files and, and publish them out to the web or wherever it is that they need to be utilised.